Jack's counsel appointed to investigate former President Donald Trump at the Justice Department has sent a grand jury subpoena to Georgia's Republican Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger. The subpoena was confirmed by Raffensperger's office asking him to provide documents. Now a source familiar with the matter tells NBC News it does not request him to testify in person. Trump called Raffensperger on January 2nd, 2021, demanding he, quote, find the votes to reverse President Joe Biden's win in the state. You remember that. Georgia reaffirmed President Biden's victory several times after the election in November of 2020. NBC News has learned special counsel Smith has also issued subpoenas to election officials in Clark County, Nevada. That's in addition to state and local officials in the battleground states of Arizona, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. All of the states are central to Trump's failed plan to stay in power after the 2020 election. They're also among the first known subpoenas issued since Smith was named last month by Attorney General Merrick Garland to oversee Trump-related aspects of the investigation into January 6th and the criminal probe of Trump's possible mishandling of classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. It's exhausting the number of questions this former <laughs> president has raised uh, about what happened. Um, Ken, but give me a sense of um, what this signifies. Just the subpoena of Raffensperger to turn over documents that focus on him and these other states. I think this is a very important moment in this investigation, Mika, because until now it hadn't been clear that the Justice Department was aggressively pursuing the conduct in Georgia, given the fact that there's a state investigation down there. And that's all, that was always a mystery, though, because if it was illegal uh, in other states or potentially illegal, you know, Georgia was the best example, actually, with the best evidence. They have the president of the United mm -hmm. States on tape pressuring, trying to pressure Brad Raffensperger to find 11,780 votes. And if you remember, from that famous conversation, Trump also tried to suggest that the, they knew the election was corrupt and it was very risky for them not to act on that. And this is the guy that was in charge of the Justice Department at the time. So he was almost hinting that there, there was criminality there if they didn't do his bidding. And so it's really interesting. Jack Smith is still in the Netherlands, the special counsel, recovering from uh, a bike accident uh, where he, got, he hurt his leg. But his influence is really being felt in this investigation. He is really moving forward uh, quickly and aggressively. And in terms of the, the subpoenas to the state, if you look at that subpoena, there's a list of people, um, all, almost everyone that we know of who was involved in this effort to overturn the election, Rudy Giuliani, Cleta Mitchell, John Eastman, Bill Sepian, uh, Boris Epstein, people who work for the Trump campaign. The DOJ wants communications between those people and these state and local election officials, uh, and they're vacuuming them up right now, Mika. And that, that map we just had up there shows the reach of Jack Smith and all the states where he's looking. Uh, another story for you, Ken, a busy legal morning. A federal judge has dismissed former President Donald Trump's lawsuit challenging the government's access to materials seized from his Mar-a-Lago home and club. Judge Eileen Cannon, a Trump appointee who you'll remember originally appointed the special master to the case and had to dismiss the case herself. The order came after Trump chose not to appeal a higher court ruling that stopped the special master from reviewing the materials taken in the FBI's search of Mar-a-Lago, ending Trump's months-long legal <laughs> battle. So bottom line, Ken, here, the special master, after all that, is over? It's over and gone, and the DOJ has all the documents seized at Mar-a-Lago. And it's, it was really a humiliating moment for that federal judge down in Florida who made such a show of creating this special master, which most legal experts thought was not warranted. And the 11th Circuit Appeals Court, including two Trump-appointed judges and another, a third Republican judge, a uh, Republican-appointed judge, slapped her down and said, this is ridiculous. We don't have a special rules for a former president. Criminal defendants are not entitled to a special master unless there's evidence that the Justice Department violated their rights. And there was no evidence in this case. And so, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about this. But, you know, you know what, Willie, we did learn some things from that uh, protracted litigation and the appointment of the special master. We learned that Donald Trump's lawyers were unwilling to say in court that Donald Trump had declassified those documents, even though 
Trump had been saying that in public. They were unwilling to make that argument. And we also learned that they may try to exert executive privilege over some of these documents if this case ever goes to trial, but that there doesn't seem to be much of a basis for that. So it allowed the public to get a, a better view of kind of what was seized at Mar-a-Lago. So in that respect, it wasn't, uh, for us anyway, it wasn't a total loss. But legally, this will be remembered as a footnote and again, you know, action by a federal judge that appeared to have no basis in law. Mm -hmm. But a footnote, Ken Delanian, that bought Donald Trump time. And some would argue that's another thing that his team was trying to do, was just drag things out. Now that the special master is out of the way, what does it open the door to? How does this progress forward and what's the timeline? I've been asking all my sources the same question. The, the timeline for Mar-a-Lago is certainly uh, more accelerated than it is for January 6th. Uh, it, you know, nobody thinks we're going to see charges before, for example, the holidays, but no one would be surprised if they decide to charge this case that it could happen in the first part of the year. But, you know, this recent um, back and forth that all happened in secret in front of the grand jury in Washington, D.C., and the, uh, where, where the DOJ tried to, uh, as far as our reporting tells us, they tried to get the judge to hold the tr office of the former president in contempt, and they were unsuccessful. That, to me, hinted... <laughs> It was a bit of a caution flag there. It showed that it suggested to me that the DOJ was not able to connect Donald Trump personally with the alleged obstruction of justice because they weren't they weren't trying to hold him personally in contempt. Uh, and that may signal a problem in at least that part of the case. But again, many legal experts who have looked at the evidence we've already seen say in terms of the mishandling of classified documents, almost anyone else would have been charged by now. And it really comes yeah. down to whether the Justice Department wants to bring just that case or whether they continue to pursue these the potential obstruction of justice allegations. Mika.